It's uh, Bob. Sorry? It's you, Bob. <laughs> it's apple pie tonight. <laughs> Is it? Since Friday, then? Yes. <laughs> Following advice from Chris Rea, I always crack an egg into my bath. <laughs> We should say for any of the, the younger viewers, some of my fans, who, who Chris Rea... <laughs> Chris Rea was a very popular singer. When did Chris Rea give you this advice and in what, what context? Um, I was making a single for Middlesbrough Football Club's um, FA Cup appearance uh, called Let's, Let's Dance, which I did with Chris Rea. Mm. And after we completed the, the recording, he popped me into the bath and there was an egg. <laughs> He, he popped you into the bath. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long day, you must be very tired. Yeah. He said, let's just... I'll just pop you into the bath. Yeah. So wh where was this bath? Was it at it, the recording studio? It's on a little island in the middle of the Thames. It's this Rose recording um, yeah. studio. Is. So you've been recording, presumably, in, in a room without a bath. Uh, absolutely, yeah. And then you finish the recording, everyone's very happy with the track. Yep. And he says, Bob, you look tired. <laughs> Maybe your joints are aching this way. No, it's not exactly like that. He says, I like that's it, Bob. I think we've got that leg. <laughs> that's your bedroom, that's your bath. I've popped a leg in there for you. <laughs> <laughs> Is he Geordie? Yeah. He's well, like where I'm from, Middlesbrough. Right. But he's much more Middlesbrough than me, like. <laughs> and why would he put an egg in your bath? Yes. What was the thinking behind it? Um, I've never found out. <laughs> You've done it ever since. All, all, I know, all I know is that I woke up the next morning and I have never felt so alive. <laughs> Was the egg still in its shell, floating, or had he gone... No, the white had dis dissipated. Does that work? <laughs> yeah. It's fabulous, it's fabulous. It's non-greasy, which is a, is, a, is a boon, isn't it? Is it, is it non-greasy? Yeah, yeah, honestly. It's less greasy Absolutely. than water without egg in it? <laughs> do you have to mix it up, or do you just crack it and let it float? Do you know what? You get in the bath, even in the bath where I am now, and you get in and you, don't, you really don't want to burst the yolk. So the white goes, but the yolk's there, <laughs> and you move like that, and you try and get it to come <laughs> towards you like that. I don't know why, but you just do. Have you ever had a gun get in your mouth? You get it uh, like that. Have you ever had a gun get in your mouth? And then you get the yolk, and I, don't, and I use it for, for hair conditioning. Yeah. <laughs> not not that much hair, but to condition the hair on my skin. So, just to, going back to the original occasion, uh, Chris Rea had already run you a bath. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, mean, I forgot about that detail. <laughs> You, 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 Chris, it's just so Chris. <laughs> yeah. Do you know, the other thing it was, is a couple of weeks later, he sent me a gold doily. <laughs> right. <laughs> to dry yourself off. <laughs> I don't know. But so, I'm just saying, these things are just so Chris. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think that the way Bob describes what happened to the egg white... Is that... He says it just dissipates. Is that plausible? If your plausible? bath is hot, then you're going to have a poached white. I'd have thought the white would, yeah, would turn white. And well, you'd no, be no, bitter no, no, as white. How no, hot no. is your bath? Yeah. <laughs> you know you can... Your bath is hot enough that an egg could poach Well, I don't know. <laughs> You, your claim is that it dissipates. I'm asking my team whether oh, right. we believe that it would dissipate. Because if, for example, at the temperature of Bath, say, 39 degrees Celsius, the white would turn opaque, then your story doesn't check out. Agreed. Yeah. Absolutely I agreed. I think... <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, David? I, I think it's fair to say that if anyone else had made this allegation about Chris Rea and an egg in their bath, we wouldn't be giving it a moment <laughs> consideration. <laughs> somehow, coming from Bob, <laughs> it might be true. <laughs> it's true. I, I, I think... You think it's...? I think it's true, cos he's, 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 he's been about oh, a bit, Bob. no. <laughs> <laughs> I think the white would poach. Yeah, the... Yeah, I think the egg is the The chemical part. analysis of the behaviour of the albumen. <laughs> <laughs> 
David, honestly, one thing, please don't base it on the album and whitening. It does not <laughs> happen. It does not. I can't have a bath at 80 plus degrees. <laughs> what about that Is that it? the temperature at which an egg white will 80 to, It'll start at about 80, yeah. <laughs> honestly, don't, please don't base it on that. <laughs> Should I base it on, Bob? George... <laughs> what are you going to say? Instinctively, I believe it. We're going to go true. You're saying Ooh. true. Okay, so Bob, Chris Rea, <laughs> eggs, <laughs> darts. Is it the truth or is it a lie? This is awful. <laughs> <laughs> I was telling a lie. <laughs> Chris Rea put an egg in his bath. Of course it's a lie. It's obviously a lie. Who could possibly believe that? It'd be more likely that someone was stuck in a car wash for three hours. Yes, it's a lie. Bob doesn't crack an egg into his bath following advice from Chris Rea. Bob, you're next. I once helped Damon Hill to Grand Prix success by presenting him with a pre-race snack. David's team. <laughs> well, it certainly tripped off the tongue. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, what was the snack? A scotch egg. <laughs> and is there a definite correlation between him eating that scotch egg and him being successful? He um, felt that the Scotch egg had helped him succeed in the race. He told me so. <laughs> Is Damon Hill a close friend, Bob? No, no. <laughs> then why were you giving him food stuff? <laughs> well, I'd been invited to the Grand Prix. Which Grand Prix? The, the British. In, in, in which year? Think. <laughs> 1996, David, but I'm not willing to exclude four years either side of that. <laughs> Put it this way, it was definitely one of the decades. <laughs> Do you like racing, then? No, I'm not a, a Formula One fan. Right. I probably uh, prefer soil science. OK. <laughs> <laughs> Who was he driving for? He was driving for one, uh, a company um, <laughs> that had right. very fast company cars. <laughs> <laughs> so, why were you permitted access to a major racing driver? Because his manager, yeah. Yeah, Shane Tobacco... <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't remember his you name. can't remember his name. Shane, uh, or whoever it was, he was also with another bloke, you know, benefiting from hospitality. What was his name? Let's say Top Heavy Ken. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but I remember we went upstairs on the bus, Damon was there, he had a bed in there. Like a sort of Winnebago. Yeah. And it had, you know, mugs with I love cars, I love, <laughs> I love hand brakes, I love headrests. And this is the day of the race. David, this is just like an hour and a half before the an race. An hour and a half oh, before the race. You've turned up an hour and a half early, cos even though you're more into soil science, you want to soak up the atmosphere <laughs> with a good hour and a half of yeah. waiting before the televised traffic begins. Yes. <laughs> so you turn up. The last thing Damon needs before a race is any quiet time. He just <laughs> wants a bit of hubbub <laughs> on his bus. Were there any other people there apart from you and Shane and Damon? I was with my wife as well, yeah. OK. Mm. And, um... Top heavy can. <laughs> <laughs> so me and the wife went up. I think when you go to someone's home or their Winnebago or whatever you should... Do you know, like, if you're going to a dinner party at someone's house, you'll always take them a bottle of vinegar, yeah? <laughs> yeah. So your gift to thank him for the hospitality was a scotch egg? No. Oh. I call it pocket meat. Whenever I'm out away from... <laughs> whenever I'm away from my house, I have pocket meat. Yeah. That's what I have, like, a chicken leg <laughs> or pork pie. <laughs> And I thought, I've got some pocket meat. It was a scotch egg in its cellophane. And I said, Damon, we all know that um, if you pop a sausage roll in an American's pocket, it brings him good luck. <laughs> I 
So maybe a Scotch egg would work for a British fella like you. Is, and I gave it to him. Is that a thing? Yeah, very what, much. What, that so. if you put meat in, a, in an American's pocket? <laughs> processed meat. Have you ever heard of that? <laughs> not, not really, no. No. It's all been a bit of a lot of talking. <laughs> <laughs> the original bit of the story. Did he eat said scotch uh, egg before uh, the race? I, I'll yeah, never yeah. know, Samantha, but after the race, he said that he took the scotch egg round with him. He swore he did. In the I, car? I don't know whether he put it in the glove box on the passenger seat. <laughs> <laughs> but, Bob, you're not claiming that he ate the egg. All I'll say is, is that when I was watching, when, when Damon went past, in his tailwind, a person next to me said, Damon's tailwind smelt really meggy, which, of, <laughs> course, which of course is meat and egg. Meat and egg. Okay. So, well, what are we thinking, Sam? Do you know what? Sometimes stories are so mad that they've got to be true. What I would say here is be wary when it comes to Bob. Oh, OK. <laughs> Do you remember, David, that I think it was the last time Bob was with us, he told us Chris Shreer told him he <laughs> put an egg into his bath. I can't even remember. Was mm. that true? No. But you believed it was true? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Miles, what are you thinking? Well, I'm... I think that you're sort of somewhat cynically using this as an opportunity to tout your kind of charms, <laughs> and you're hoping to kind of drum up work and then your agent's going to get lots of phone calls saying, well, would Bob Mortimer be able to sort of slip Gareth Bale a pasty and stuff like this? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a lie. You think it's a lie? But you think it's true? I'm on the fence. Oh, dear. This is a horrible situation. I don't know. My instinct is it's a lie. You're saying lie? OK. Yeah. Bob Mortimer. Uh, a lucky Scotch egg for Damon Hill at the British Grand Prix. Truth or lie? <laughs> I was telling the truth. <laughs> Situation. <laughs> one egg thing's true, the other egg thing. How can I have disbelieved the wrong egg thing? <laughs> so, so obviously, what they'd make up some random thing about an egg and a long departed 90s celebrity. <laughs> Is he dead? He's not. No, he's not dead. He's just, you never hear from him. What does Damon Hill do now? He's probably into soil science. <laughs> <laughs> right. Our next round is 